Hey, this video is on how to use PC Part Picker to help you get guided through your selection of parts to build your PC. So uh, I'm going to go straight to this one that says Builder, and we get right here to our uh, starting point. Now, as we go, as we add parts, it's going to estimate our wattage for us up here. It's also going to give us a price down here. So it has almost all the things we want to add to our build. How do we want to get started? So the first thing you want to do is kind of set a roundhouse for yourself of what you want to spend on your uh, CPU based on what your total price is. Okay, so we're going to say $1,500 is our, our target price right now. So with that in mind, I'm going to say around $200 on my CPU. So how am I going to, I'm going to go to Passmark CPUs. And I'm going to build, I really want to build the best gaming system I, I can. So if I go to the CPU list, oop, not that one. I want to go to the high-end CPU list. I want, I know that I don't need anything up here on this list. In fact, let's go and look at uh, what I do need. So Hogwarts Legacy is one of the newest games out saying it needs a high-end CPU. So it's saying, and, and GPU, it's, it's one of the highest right now. Not saying that you can't go better in fact I would but down here it's saying let's look where the Ryzen 5 3600 is on Passmark if I could not be dyslexic so the Ryzen 5 3600 I guess I'm gonna have to type five oh, is all the way down here at 18,000 in fact, 36, it's, we're looking at, uh, at yeah, 18,000 on the pass mark. So I, I want to go higher than that, but I really think the GPU is more important than the CPU when it comes to this. So I'm going to go back over here to my charts, and I'm going to go back to the best value on the market again, and look at what's got up there high in the 2,000, I'm sorry, the 20,000 ranges. And it looks like the Ryzen 7 3700X is really high. The 3900X is even higher. Well, you know what? Let's let's use that one. Let's go with the 3900X. So if I go over here and type 3900X, I can get the Ryzen 9 3900X. And it looks like that's without cooling, I'm going to guess. Yep. Whereas this one's with cooling for $299. So I'm going to go and, and go with that one. Now I'm going to go down to my motherboard next. And it is automatically only going to pick motherboard sockets that match. I am going to be a snob again. I'm going to pick my higher end uh, manufacturers. I'm also going to say I only want full size ATX. And I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. If, this, if I was going to college with this, I would want it to have integrated Wi-Fi. So let's throw Wi-Fi on there as well for my gaming one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, arrange it by price again and see what our options are. We've got this AS Rock. I've already said I like Gigabyte. Let's take a look at this one first. See if we can see some pictures there. It definitely has Wi-Fi. Doesn't have any... Um, integrated um, video, but we don't need that. These have components issues. See details. Warning, it doesn't contain a stock cooler. We already knew that. AM4. Where is our compatibility issue? Is that this? details below oh just does not include a, a cooler you know what let's go ahead and, and put this guy to rest i already know i want to get liquid cooling and let's look at the cheapest liquid cooling option we have we've got the cooler master that i do like let's go ahead and throw that on there so now it's gone away our compatibility is good memory we're going to want to throw i'm going to want to throw um 
two 16s on there. I want 32 gig of RAM for my higher end. Look at our Corsair right here. Oh, this one's only $69. We're going to throw that one on there. Storage. I know that I'm going to want a solid state drive, and I also know um, that my initial drive, I want to be an M.2 drive. So I'm going to say a two terabyte M.2 is where I want to start at. Let's see what I can get into two terabyte M.2. And let's go back to being a snob here. We don't want any of those off brands that aren't normal. I can get this crucial M.2. No, that's a regular solid set. Kingston in NVMe drive there or this crucial. This one's cheaper. Let's go and go with the Kingston. So now I've got my storage. Um, and I, we said our, our goal was uh, $1,500. I've got $900 left. Let's go ahead and throw a case on there to make sure we've got that and see what we've got left. So on my cases, I know I want an ATX full-size case. Um, that's pretty much all I care about right now. Why am I showing so few... Options, ATX desktop. I do not know why I have so few options on here. Um, do I have a filter on? Hold on, what did I just do? I did, I did not say I wanted that case. Let's start all over again. Choose a case. Oh, it's because I said full tower, and really, I just wanted to make sure it takes an ATX. Let's see. Um, ATX desktop or full tower. Either one of those is good. Oh, now I've got... Um, okay, now I'm going to do it by price. I, don't, I guess I just didn't click enough. I want to make sure I've got case fans with mine uh, because... I don't want to have to buy any case fans. So I'm going to buy one that has cake fan. I'm going to go with this fractal design one right here. Yeah, sure. We'll go with that one. $114. Okay. We've got everything built right now. We've got our memory. We've got our initial storage. All we don't have is a power supply and a video card. Right now, our we've got, uh, looks like, $800 less left. So let's go to our Passmark uh, CPU list, I'm sorry, our GPU list, and take a look at what we can get that's under that price range. And I'm going to start with the high end. So I'm going to try to build the best thing I can. And it looks like the 4070 Ti is just out of price range. But the 4070 is in my price range. Let's take a look at that um, and see if we can get a 4070 in here. So we're going to go to um, video card and I'm going to go ahead and type in 4070 and see what we've got up here. I'm going to arrange by price. There's the 4070 12 gig model, uh, 589. How much does that leave us left? We've still got... Another $200 for our power supply. And right now it says we need $429. We're going to shoot way above that for our power supply. So let's go ahead and look at what we've got. Oh, Corsair right up top. ATX, 850 watt, 80 plus gold. That's in our price range. What does that bring us up to? $1,519. And that's pretty much it. That's as far as we can go for a $1,500 system. We've got our CPU with water cooling. We've got a good gigabyte motherboard. We've got 32 gig of RAM. We've got a two terabyte NVMe drive. We've got a RTX 4070 video card with 12 gig of uh, video storage. We've got this nice fractal design uh, case with four cooling fans. And we've got an 850 watt, 80 plus gold certified uh, Corsair power supply. Uh, if I had more money, I'd add additional storage, but I don't. Um, I could downgrade my video card, but I would rather get the high-end video card and add another more storage later, which is way easier to do than it is to go later and say, I want to sell my video card and get a better video card. 
And that's why I like P PC Parts Picker. It allows me to see all the different places I can buy them from. You can see uh, many of these are from Amazon Prime. Some of them are not. You can see there's some other different locations there as well. But I've got my whole thing. I can save it. I can print it out. And I can follow these links and go ahead and buy that now. You can see the links right there to buy take me straight to the website where I can buy that item. So very nice way to, to stay organized while you're looking for all your parts and trying to stay in your range. It also helps to make sure that you're buying parts that go with each other. That's why you've got this great compatibility up here. It turns red if things are incompatible, keeps track of your wattage, and keeps track of your price as you're doing your shopping. And that is how I would use PC Parts Picker to help do your buy versus build project to stay within your cap and your price range.